Okay. So hello everyone. Welcome to our virtual college exploration. I want to welcome you. It's sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the question and answer button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at PACAC.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, PACAC.org. Now I will stop sharing and turn it over to our presenter. Wonderful, thanks so much for the introduction, Amy. Um, and hello everyone, hello students of Pennsylvania. I'm gonna share my screen and get stuck into the presentation. So hopefully you can all see that on my screen. I'm just gonna go into slideshow mode. So hello everyone, my name is Annabelle Molina. I am the special projects manager for the University of East London and I specialize in America's recruitment. Um, I've been lucky enough to work directly with Americans for the past seven years, bringing students over to, to Europe, to study in Europe, which has been incredibly exciting. So I encourage students to study in London, to study in Dublin, to study in Spain. So I'm really passionate about what international opportunities give you and also the horizons it can broaden, not to mention all the amazing friends that you can make and also all the fantastic travel opportunities that you can have by, by studying abroad. So I wanted to start off with this particular slide. It's this gorgeous slide with two beautiful pictures of London, one which looks like it's a sunrise, uh, well, a morning photo with Big Ben, and then another one which is more of an aerial shot with the shard um, as the focal point. And this is just to reiterate, we are a London university. So we're based in London, England. We do not have any other campuses across the world. We have three campuses in London with our main one being right by the River Thames in an area called the Docklands. And, um, and but we do have a good amount of international students studying with us. Around 20% of our total student population is international. We are also based in London, England. So there might be some of you who have been to London and you will know how wonderful of a city it is. Um, it's one of those cities which is constantly changing, really fun to be in, um, very similar to New York. We, we don't bear the slogan, uh, the city that never sleeps. That's definitely New York's. But we have taken this slogan from Samuel Johnson, which is when a man is tired of London, he is tired of life. And we firmly believe that. I moved to London in 2013. I intended to only stay two years. And I've been there on and off because I've moved to a couple of different cities, but always returned um, for the past seven years. So here's been one of those cities that always draws me back because it's just so much fun and it is a great city to be a part of. Not to, my, not to mention it is a very diverse city, which in our day and age is really important. So it's one of those cities where there are so many cultures, people of all different walks of life, uh, all different backgrounds, and we're really proud to, to be a city which has such diversity. So a bit more about studying at the University of East London. So we started off as something called a Polytechnic College back in 1892. This Polytechnic College, we were focusing on everything very much to do with um, making things. So engineering or physically like carpentry. But in 1992, we gained university status and then the University of East London was born. And after that, we uh, started offering a wide range of courses and we were what we would call a modern university. So the latest universities in the UK that have uh, gained university status have been the, the universities that were, um, what's the word, were made universities in 1992. So, our student population is 17,000 students. And as I mentioned before, our international population is 20%. We, 
We offer a wide range of subjects across six schools. So we offer education, business, health, sports and biosciences, any of the art or creative uh, programs, as well as architecture, computing and psychology. We notably do not offer any language programs, but pretty much anything but apart from that, we will have something related to it. So this is a picture of um, our campus. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have three campuses, but this one is our biggest campus. And it is, it is still not a huge campus, but to give you a bit of perspective, in London, the campus environment is not as um, widely known or recognized as it would be in the States, where it's very common to have a campus environment. In the UK, it's much more common, especially within cities, to have something called a city campus. Now, a city campus is where you would live in an accommodation and there would be different buildings of accommodation across London. So as a student, you could be in one area of London and your another classmate could be in another area of London and you'd have different buildings across the city. And so you wouldn't have any kind of community base, you would just have different buildings would you, you go to according to your classes. Now, being a modern university, we decided that we didn't want this for our students. We wanted to give them a community and a campus for them to get plugged into. So that is why we're one of the only universities in London to have a campus environment. So you'll see that in the photo, uh, you'll see, and I'm going to use my cursor, there is um, this big building in the middle, and that is where most of the classes are held. However, we do have a smaller campus in another area of East London, and we have another very small campus, mainly for students studying IT or anything to do with accounting, business, um, and they'll be using more of our Bloomberg terminals. Now, You'll notice that the, there are these buildings that are lining the water that almost have a circular shape to them. That is our accommodation on campus. And I'm just going to flip back to the slide before and put my cursor on this photo right here. So this, this is our accommodation right by the water. So giving you a different angle, some gorgeous accommodation. And of course, it is right by the water. And across the water, you won't be able to see it in this photo, but um, we have the financial district very close, just across the water, pretty much on our doorstep. Um, so we're very well connected as well. And I think it's really important to mention this because obviously if you are studying at the Docklands campus and you, are, you have accommodation here, it's a very short commute and it just means that you have to walk to class, um, but it also means that you have a constant community base throughout your three years at the University of East London. Now, it's not visible in this photo, but further up in the photo, we would have the sports dock. And most notably, you will notice on the right-hand right side is the River Thames. And probably even more noticeably, you'll notice this circle in the middle. Now, I think it's really important to, to make it apparent that this is our transport system. So in London, we use the tube, so that is, the equivalent of the subway um, that you would have in New York or in Chicago in, or in any of your main cities. And, um, but in London, it's really big and public transport is a big deal in London. We have 250 different station stops across the London area. From the west side to the east side or from the south to the north, it can take up to two hours. It's a huge city. So it's actually made up of nine different zones. So I want you to imagine, so I'm holding up a circle. So the middle circle is everything that you'll probably know from visiting or from the movie. So we're talking about Buckingham Palace, um, Big Ben, uh, Westminster Abbey, Every all of that will be in the, the first circle, which is um, zone one. And then you, you should imagine a ripple effect. So as a circle, another circle will go around the other circle and that would be zone two. And that would be things that are still prominent, but aren't in the main center. And then you'll have another circle and that would be zone three. And more, the, more the, the further the circles go out, the higher the zone number, and also the more suburban it becomes. 
So that's just to give you a bit of an idea of London. So it's made up in, up of nine zones. So of course, zone nine is going to be much more family orientated, much more kind of near um, maybe countryside area, whilst zone one will be very much a touristy um, part of London. Now, in London, um, we use the transport for everything. So it operates um, pretty much 24 hours a day. But I wanted to make note of the transport system in this photo. Um, we have a transport system right outside the door of our campus, which means that you literally have London on your doorstep. And whilst we are really proud to have a campus environment, we also think it's really important that if there is something we do not offer at the University of East London, whether it be a particular sport you like, a hobby, um, you know, maybe you want to learn a language and we don't offer languages, you can learn it in London. Because the beautiful thing about London is that there is pretty much everything that you could ever want. There is any sport, any hobby, um, any kind of food that you'd want to try. And the brilliant thing about having a transport stop right outside the door of the campus is that pretty much every 10 minutes, and that's the maximum you'll wait, is pretty much 10 minutes, there'll be a train and it'll be able to come and collect you and you'll be able to go wherever you need to go. And that train will run from 6 a.m to 12 midnight every day. So it just goes to show like how accessible our campus is, not to mention how safe it is because you can arrive late at night and all you have to do is walk up the steps and straight in onto campus. So I'll move on. So you might be thinking, well, all that, that all sounds really great, but how do I actually apply? So if you want to apply, there are three different ways. You can apply via the Common App, you can apply directly via our website, or you can apply through something called UCAS. Now, some of you tuning in might be thinking, I know what UCAS is, but I'm gonna explain it in case some of you don't. UCAS is the common app equivalent in the UK. Now, it has a very different system. And if you are interested in knowing more and the specifics of UCAS, I'll, I, I have an, my email at the end, so you can email. but. That's just a general overview of what UCAS is. It is also what any UK student would use to apply to any UK university. So it's also a very good tool, let's say, if you want to find out what universities offer communications, you could just pop in communications into UCAS and it would give you all the universities across England, Wales and Scotland that offer communications. So it's a very good tool to use. However, if you do want to use it to apply to a university, you would have to pay $45 to $50 for your application. So it isn't free like applying through the Common App or applying directly via our website. UCAS also has a restriction which only allows you to up upload one personal statement, but you can apply up to five different institutions. So, so there is a cap of how many institutions you can apply for. So because we do offer, we do, you can apply to us via the Common App. We do encourage students to apply to us via the Common App. However, you can apply via those three methods. In terms of application decision and deadline, we offer rolling admissions to international students. This means you will, you will receive a decision within two to four weeks. You will notice that our deadline is July 2021 for a September 2021 intake. Um, we don't encourage you to apply in July of 2021, but we think it's important to note just in case you do decide to apply to universities. Maybe you think, mm, I haven't made the right decision. And a lot of universities don't accept late decisions. Well, we do. We accept them as late as July 2021. So that's something else to note. However, if you're sure that you want to apply to the University of East London, then we would encourage you to apply early, mainly because that gives you, of course, a head start on getting um, an acceptance to our university, especially for one of our more popular programs. And also because we offer a lot of events to our students. We used to go to America and host afternoon teas in different states across the US. Obviously due to COVID-19 that has been put on hold, but we do offer a lot of virtual events too. And if you are interested in UEL, we really want you to get plugged into that as soon as possible. So 
we would highly encourage applying earlier rather than later so you can be part of our prospective applicant events. In terms of duration, um, the duration of our program is three years. Now this is standard across England. 95% of universities will offer a three year degree. Some of you might be thinking you know exactly why this is, but just in case you don't, I just want to be clear that is because England does not offer general education in, in its degrees. At the age of 14, we ask our students to go from about 10 different subjects to um, about six different subjects and then from six different subjects to four different subjects and three different subjects. And then that's why at university, you can only take either a double major, which is two two um, subjects combined or you take one thing and that is why because you specialize in only those things so you wouldn't you wouldn't let's say you're taking communications you would never take maths you would only take what is pertinent to communications hence why it is a three-year degree now this is different in scotland scotland has a four-year degree method very similar to the US. In fact, the US system was um, mirrored off the Scottish system. However, England follows the three-year degree system. Tuition for the first year is about $17,000, and this includes free textbooks. Now, these aren't physical textbooks. This comes via an electronic portal. So we'll give you access to a portal, and then you can pop a name of a book in, and you'll be able to, to view it um, electronically. Because it is a three-year degree, tuition for your entire degree is around $51,000, which in comparison to a lot of other US schools can be very cost effective. So in terms of entry requirements, what we ask for is a 3.0 GPA and one of the following, either a 1070 on the SAT, or a 23 on the ACT or three AP scores of three and above. It's worth noting that we are not test optional. So you do need to provide a GPA score along with SAT, ACT or three APs. However, you don't need to provide all three, just one of either SAT, ACT or APs along with your GPA. If you plan to apply to something such as architecture, any of the art-based programs, maybe a performance program, you'll need to do um, either submit a portfolio or give an interview, or sorry, or attend an interview. Also, if you're applying to any of our education programs such as educational social work, you will also need to attend a phone interview. Now, in terms of schools, as I mentioned earlier, we, off, we have six different schools. Now, in this first slide, we have the School of Architecture, Computing and Engineering, which houses architecture, engineering. We also offer under the school, fine art, graphics, interior design and product design. We have the School of Art and Creative Industries, which is much more to do with the creative subjects, performance-based subjects, as well as journalism and film. And then we have the School of Business and Law, which is very much accounting, finance, hospitality, um, law, as well as human resources. And then we have the CAS School of Education, which is anything education based, as well as humanities, social work and sociology. Then we have the School of Health, Sports and Bioscience, which is any of the biosciences, um, as well as sports and exercise. Um, and any of our health programs such as public health. And then we also have the School of Psychology which houses all of our psychology programs. So in terms of um, accommodation, in the US you will be aware of the accommodation format which is typically a dorm setup. So very much like something in, our, in this photo to the right where you'll have two single beds and then you'll have maybe two desks um, and you'll be sharing with another roommate, which really does have it, its perks in terms of friendship and getting to know and having like a really good buddy. Um, but in the UK, we do not have that system. And as far as I'm aware, there are no um, universities in the UK that have that system, at least that follow the English format. Now, 
we off, we give you your own private room. So this includes a little single bed, a desk, a closet, but we go a step further um, than other universities and we also give you your own private bathroom and shower room. It's not visible in the left-hand picture over here, but it will be, it would be like just within your room, you'd have a, a small little shower room um, and then you'd have your toilet and your basin. You'd also get access to a shared kitchen, which you would share between three to five students. And all of this would come in at around $7,500 per year. Now it's noticeable that you would get your room from the end of September to around the second week of June. This is mainly because students will go back home for the summer. So your room is not for the whole year, it is for nine months. A lot of you might be thinking, well, what happens with a lot of the stuff that I don't want to take home, like pots and pans and um, bedding, which is a really good question. Well, as I mentioned before, there are 20% 20, 20 of our student cohort is international. So a lot of students will be in that very same position. So for that reason, a lot of our students will get together and they will pay for a locker room together, uh, sorry, a storage locker together where they will put maybe a few odd suitcases, their bedding, and they will collect it once they return for their, for their following year. Um, so that is an option. Some students decide to stay over the summer, in which case you can try to extend your lease at the university. Some cho students choose to stay in halls. Other students will choose to live in London, uh, the city of London outside of the university area for those three months which is perfectly fine as well. And there's always the opportunity to do that because London has a lot of accommodation available for you. But in terms of the price, it's 7,500 for the nine months from September to June. It's worth noting that that price also does not include meal plans. And this is because in the UK, in the UK, meal plans are not really very common with UK students. We created the meal plan with the international student in mind. However, for the average UK student, what they will do is they will get together with their housemates or their, their fellow dorm mates and they will um, cook together. Because obviously when you have your own room, you do have the ability to have your privacy and your downtime. So when you eat, it's a really good time to kind of get together, maybe cook together. One person cooks on Monday, the other one on Tuesday and etc. cetera. Um, so sharing a kitchen and cooking together is a big deal. So the UK student typically does not go for the meal plans, but they are an option to you if you think that that is something you would like. So sports, fantastic. So we were lucky enough, the University of East London was lucky enough to host the Team USA basketball team in the 2012 Olympics, which was an incredible year for London, incredible year for the UK in general, and, um, and so wonderful for UEL because we were able to host some of your most, you know, the most fantastic basketball players in history um, on our campus. And what that really did was it created a sports legacy for the University of East London. So we are consistently ranked in the top three universities in London for sports. We also offer sports scholarships for students who are good at sports and especially competitive sports. So let's say you're tuning in and you are good at soccer or basketball or volleyball let us know because you, we, we might be able to offer you a sports scholarship. If you're on this, um, if you're tuning in and you're thinking, mm, competitive sports is really not my jam, that's totally fine as well. We do have a sports dock, which has a gym. Um, we also offer weekly tournaments as well as exercise classes. So we offer anything from yoga to Pilates to Zumba we have a spin studio, and we really believe that healthy body is equates to a healthy mind, and we really want our students to utilize it because it is such a great amenity to have on campus. Now, we offer um, gym, the gym and the sports stock at a really reduced rate, um, and we offer weekly classes at all different times from morning to the evening to suit all different schedules as well. 
So I mentioned travel a little bit before, but I just wanted to touch on it a little bit. It's no surprises that a lot of the students that choose to study at the University of East London or that decide to pursue their degree internationally will come across the pond because they love to travel. They will want to travel London, they will want to travel the UK and Scotland and Wales, um, and they'll also want to travel Europe as well. So I wanted to touch on travel in the UK in general. So as I mentioned before, we have public transport in London. We have exceptional public transport. So you'll see in the photo, uh, the famous red double-decker buses. Those red double-decker buses run 24 hours a day, even on Christmas day. They just run in a loop. So depending on the number of bus, they'll just keep going round and round for 24 hours a day. It's pretty remarkable. So if you, um, our tube system, on the other hand, runs from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. So if you miss the, the last tube home or you decide to stay out late, it's not an issue. You can always get a bus home. But also, like most cities, we offer ta we have taxis. You'll have you'll have seen in the movies our black bubble shaped taxis that are really famous. We also have Uber in the UK as well. So there are many ways to get around in London. It's also really important to note that we have five different airports in the London area. So if you want to get to anywhere in Europe, it is really accessible from wherever you're based in London, whether that be north, east, south or west. So to get to the to other areas of Europe is not hard at all. What's more important is that flights are really quite fairly priced within Europe. Now this could change with Brexit, but it currently has not changed. So to travel to Paris, to travel to Greece, to travel to Italy, you can pay as little as sometimes 20 pounds, which is equivalent to around maybe $30 at the most. And we, we always play a game in the office, which is what is the cheapest um, flight that you've ever bought. And my colleague Felicia, she bought a flight for five pounds, which is the equivalent of $7.50. So you can really get flights across Europe for a really good price, which means that traveling doesn't have to be expensive and it is really that accessible. Just going back to traveling around the London area, for a lot of, we're, we're aware that for a lot of students tuning in, you might not be from a city within the London, sorry, might not be from a city within the US. Um, and so you might be more familiar to, to having a car and driving yourself around. Um, so we do have students asking, do they need to buy a car? Um, and, and, you know, things like that. But we don't have any students who, who purchase a car, mainly because it would just be a real waste of money based on the fact that we have such good public transport. Um, not only that, but as a student, you get one third of your travel um, in London because you have a student status. So that's also something to be aware of. And then lastly, we're aware that sometimes people just want to, uh, you know, visit home for the summer or go home for Christmas or Thanksgiving. So having five airports in the London area means that home isn't that far away. So just to recap the benefits of studying at the University of East London. Number one, you can complete your bachelor's degree in three years instead of four years or your master's degree in one year instead of two years. So to give you an understanding, the average UK student will start their, their will go to university at 18, they will complete their degree in three years and they will then go on to take a master's for one year and that they will have complete that by the age of 22 which means you can get on the career ladder a lot quicker than you could in the States. And also, it also means that you save a lot of money in terms of your studies. General education studies are not required. So if you are taking a, a degree that doesn't involve any general ed, you will never have to take it again. So it means maybe taking, never having to take maths classes again, which I know for a lot of students is a welcome relief. Tuition fees are less than $17,500 per year 
for both undergraduate students and postgraduate students. We accept federal student loans. It's worth noting that we accept federal student loans. However, we are unable to accept federal grants for the simple reason the grants do not transfer internationally. We offer scholarships to reduce your tuition fees. These scholarships are valued for your first year. They are not based on merit. They are based on the program that you apply for and are installed by your school of choice. So at one point during the presentation, I mentioned the six schools. Depending on which school you're going into, you will get a certain scholarship for your first year. This will vary from anything from $1,500 to $5,000. Now, let's say you get a $5,000 scholarship. This means that your, your tuition would go to down to about $12,000 for that first year. So it, it can take a sizable amount of your tuition. It is worth noting though, that we currently only have a scholarship in place for your first year. Also scholarships are not a big thing in the UK, generally because um, the price of tuition within the UK is very fair usually. And so scholarships have only been really created to serve the international student cohort. Cost for on-campus housing with private room and bathroom starts at 7,500 per year. You get free textbooks for your entire degree via um, an electronic portal. You can save thousands of dollars not having to own and maintain a car as London is a commuter city. And if you decide you love studying at UEL and you want to study your masters, you, can, you have uh, the possibility of getting an alumni scholarship um, to stay on for your masters. So if this all sounds of interest to you, just to reiterate, you can apply today if you're a senior, you can apply via the Common App, you can di apply directly via our website, or as I mentioned earlier, you can apply via UCAS. So that ends my presentation. I think it's really worth noting that we have an email address. Um, it's just me today. However, I have two wonderful colleagues, a colleague named Felicia, who um, is from Canada. She studied at UT Austin for four years. Um, and then transferred over to the University of East London to complete her master's degree and wrote for us competitively. And she is now working with our team. We also have Caitlin who joined four years ago as a Californian student. Um, she, loved, she loved studying at UEL and now she is part of our team as well. So, um, we love having our US students join. We have about 100 US students join every year. And that leads me to my next point, which is we have an Instagram, which is follow me to East London. We would absolutely love it if you followed us, gave us a little follow, um, because we, we showcase our US students coming across the pond and the journey that they take. and the successes that they have whilst they study with us. So if you reach out to us, either Caitlin, Felicia or I will get back to you. And we'd love us if you gave us a little follow on Instagram. I'm gonna open the floor for questions and give it a couple of minutes. Um, if we don't get any questions then I might wrap up early, but if you do have any questions, feel, please feel free to pop a question in and i will be more than happy to answer it. So currently no question. Oh, I think we've got one coming in. Bear with me a second. So we have a question asking, can you talk about how the student visa process works? I understand that it will take a sizable amount of money to get a visa and I would like more information about how I can get that money. That's a really great question. Thank you so much for asking. The student visa process is not the most simple to explain, but I will do my very best to make it as succinct as possible. So when you apply for a visa, um, so firstly, to study in London and to study in the UK, the UK government require 
all students that are not UK citizens to have a visa. So you won't be able to study in the UK unless you get a visa, which is the first thing is you need to make sure you have a passport. And if you have a passport, you need to make sure that it's valid at least three years to get you through the duration of your program. Secondly, the visa process itself can be a little bit costly only because there are a lot of upfront costs. So in terms of how much the visa costs, I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, but you are definitely probably looking at $3,000 or so, most likely maybe even a bit more, um, but that will cover you for the duration of your visa. You don't have to renew it every year. It is a one-time fee that will last you your whole time. Now, it's also worth noting that that visa fee includes something called a health surcharge. Now, a health surcharge is the price that you pay to um, use the health service in the UK. Now, in the UK, we have something called the NHS, which is the National Health Service. And most noticeably, it's something that is free to all UK citizens because the money that we pay into our taxes goes to fund that health service. But because you are not UK citizens, you have to pay something called a supplement to be part of that health service. So that is what you would be paying within your visa fees is to be part of our health service. Now this covers everything. So let's say you need to go to a doctor for a prescription, that would be covered. Let's say something really terrible happened and you needed an operation, that would also be covered. So it covers everything small and everything big. And it will come in at around $3,000 maybe a little bit more. But again, that will cover you for your duration of your program. So that's something to, to know that it's not necessarily the visa fee that is expensive. It's the additional extras that you're asked for, such as the supplement for the health service. In terms of how the visa application actually works, what would happen is, I'll start from the beginning. You would firstly apply to the University of East London. And the University of East London would say, okay, um, we'd be delighted to accept you. The way that we have, two, we have two different ways of accepting a student. There's something called a conditional offer. And a conditional offer is when we say, thank you for applying. We'd be delighted to accept you based on you meeting our grade requirements. And there's an unconditional offer, which means that we've seen your grades and we can confirm that you've met our requirements. And that is an unconditional offer, which is a guaranteed offer. So once you've met your unconditional offer, which would be in around June or July, because we'd need your actual high school transcript, we would then say, OK, perfect. We're ready to go to head towards the visa process now. What we need to do before that is confirm your finances. So are you going to use FAFSA or are you going to pay out of pocket? So you'd have to decide that or you could decide to do a combination of both, that's fine. Then once that's confirmed, what we do is we give you something which is like a generated passcode from the University of East London. And that passcode will say, okay, please put this into the, um, the system to start your visa application. And that passcode will allow you in, it will allow you to put in your zip code and that zip code will tell you all the nearest UK consulates near to you. At that UK consulate, you would make an appointment and you would go in and you would have something called your biometrics taken. Your biometrics are your photo and your fingerprints. Once that is done, you would then have your passport and you would send it along with some paperwork to New York, to the New York Embassy. At that point, they would use a page in your passport to, to create your visa. It's something called a vignette, where they take a whole page in your passport and it would be like, um, like the photo page in your American passport currently, but just like a little bit thinner. And that would give you the right to work in the UK, the right to study in the UK um, and come in and out as often as you need to. And that is the complete visa process. 
you can apply for your visa as early as three months prior to your program starting. So most students can start applying as of late June, but you cannot start the process any earlier than that. I hope that answers your question. And I know it's a big answer because it, it, it's, uh, it's complicated not to be, to be able to answer it succinctly. But do let me know if you have any other questions regarding that. Uh, we also have another question. Do you know when the visa applications are due? So you can apply for your visa application as of uh, the end of June, and that is the earliest you can apply for it. So that for a September 2021 intake, the earliest you could start applying is June 2021. You would need to apply uh, at the very latest four weeks before starting your program. So the latest you could probably start applying is end of August to feasibly be able to arrive on time to start classes. Um, but I, th I think it's one of those things, if I can give you all the information now, but it is very hard to be able to really piece it together until, until you maybe attend one of our webinars or until really you're in the process. And that's something that we really take pride of at the University of East London. We're a really hands-on team. We do monthly checkups with all of our students who have applied. We make sure that you're happy um, and we walk you through the whole process. So at each of the processes that I mentioned um, to get to your visa, we would guide you through each of those steps. And we have a dedicated visa team at UEL um, and we have different teams to help you with different areas. So I hope that also helps with your question regarding the visas. So currently we don't have any other questions coming in, but feel free to pop a question in and I'd be more than happy to answer. I think it's also really worth um, talking about how do I know if the University of East London is right for, for me? We, that's what you might be thinking. And I would definitely have to say that if you love to travel, if you want something different to the US system, that this could really be a great fit for you. If you're in, if you love the US system, if you love sororities and campus environments, which are big and, you know, student, huge student life, that is something that's not very typical in the UK. And that might mean that maybe it, it, this isn't hundred percent the right fit, but if you want something different, that's something that's fresh, that's outside the box. If you're really excited to get your career started, then definitely the UK system might be really the right fit for you. And we have more and more US students coming over to the UK every year as they're finding out that this is a viable option for them. We can see that we've had a question come in. Question has just come in asking, how many hours can I work while studying? Also, is it fairly easy to get a job there? It's a great question. Thank you so much for asking. You can work 20 hours per week during term time. So whilst you're studying your classes, you can work 20 hours per week. Outside of term time, so Christmas holidays, Easter holidays, um, summer holidays, if you choose to stay for the summer, you can work full-time hours, which is 40 hours per week. So that's something important to note. Um, so there is that distinction, part-time while studying, full-time whilst not studying. Is it fairly easy to get a job? London is one of those cities where we have pretty much every sector. We have hospitality, we have administrative work, uh, working in a shop. So generally, it's not difficult to get a job. Um, we don't have too many jobs on campuses. We have a lot of paid internships on campus. But in terms of the London area, we've never had students struggle to get a job. Um, it just takes a little bit of looking around. And we're also lucky, to ha lucky enough to have a job center on campus, which is great because you can go in there, you can say, I want to work the weekends or I want to work evenings or and you can just specify your hours and they'll help you find the right job for you. So hopefully that is helpful. And I realize I'm nearing my, my time. So I'm gonna pass you back to Amy. I just wanna thank you so, so much for joining me today. 
And if you have any questions, please feel free to email. Great, thank you all for joining us. That was an awesome presentation. And again, you can sign up for more sessions at pacact.org slash virtual. And the recording of this session will be available to you soon. And once we close this window and say goodbye, there is a quick uh, survey that's gonna pop right up on your window. So thank you so much and have a great evening.